Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Warner Temple. What a beautiful day the Lord has given us. This is the day that he has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Glad to see all of you who've gathered here in the parking lot and those of you who may be watching us by way of social media. I ask that God might in his miraculous way meet your needs according to his riches and glory. Let me just share just a few announcements, then I'll offer a scripture, then our, our choir will come and sing. Today, of course, is College Covenant Sunday. We'll be celebrating with those students who are going back to school or going to school college for the first time. Today at 1015, uh, my son Walter Barnett will be the um, guest speaker, so we're excited about that, and that'll be at 1015 in the 1015 service. We're also reminded that our quarterly conferences are coming up. The last quarterly conference, our reports are due by August the 24th. When the August 24th, our reports are due. On the 20th of this month, next Saturday, we're going to be having, Saturday after that, we'll be having a back-to-school giveaway, book bags. Over 2,000 book bags we'll be giving away. There'll be book bags filled with school supplies for the appropriate age group or appropriate class. We'll do that at the MLK Center on the 20th from 11 to about 3 o'clock. Then on the 21st, here, both in the parking lot as well as in the 1015 service, we'll be celebrating kids who are going back to school. We call it our Back to School Sunday. We'll be praying for teachers and staff members. We'll be praying for bus drivers. We'll be praying for security guards. We'll be praying for students as well as teachers for in our Back to School Sunday celebration. That will be on the 21st. The last thing I want to share with you is that the district conference is going to be held the 19th to the 20th. It will be live at um, Somerville AME Zion Church, and we invite you to be a part of that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in this place one more time. We thank you, God, for your keeping, and we thank you, God, for how you've watched over us all week long. And God, it's not an accident that we've gathered here. It's intentional that we've come, that we might hear from you, that we might live a better life when we leave the parking lot, when we turn off our Facebook or our social media platform, that we will live a better life. Speak now, God, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. You're marvelous and you're glorious. Your love has made me victorious. You took away the fear in us. Now we praise you because you, you deliver us. There ain't no stopping us. No. Never, there ain't no blocking us. No. Come, Come on and clap, clap your hands with us. Like this, y'all. Like that, y'all. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns high. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns, forever and ever. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Some power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Some power and love, our God is an awesome God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for reminding us our God is an awesome God, and he still reigns from heaven above. I want to share with you this morning as our, a communion meditation, our thoughts entitled, How Will They Know We Are Christians? How will they know we are Christian? The scripture comes from John chapter 13. And in John chapter 13, Jesus is 
at the Lord's table. He's at the Lord's supper. Actually, this is the only gospel that doesn't actually show him serving the communion. This is the gospel where Jesus is talking about washing the, their feet and where Jesus washes their feet and where Jesus reminds them of the love that he has for them and they ought to love one another. But it's also in this chapter where Jesus is hearing the disciples discuss very um, adamantly about who is the greatest in the kingdom. They're arguing and, and juggling for positions when Jesus is preparing, trying to prepare them for what will happen at Calvary. And so after Jesus gives Judas the bread and says, this is the one who's going to betray me, and Judas leaves the room, Jesus then tells his disciples these words. John chapter 13. I'm going to start with verse number 31. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified. He had gone out, meaning Judas. Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him and in himself. And, excuse me, let me do it. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Then Jesus says to the disciples, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now to you, I say, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another. How will they know we are Christians? You see, I, I can tell you, to be honest with you, it's easy to tell if a person is a football fan like a National League football fan, if they're a Dallas girl, girl, cow girl or something, I can tell because they'll have the tag or they'll have the jersey or they'll have the star or they'll have it somewhere on their logo. They'll sometimes even wear the jerseys and the shirts. As a matter of fact, for those who are NFL fans, they can hardly wait till September 8th when the season begins. And I wonder, I wonder, is it easier for people to tell that I am a Washington Commanders fan more than it is for them to tell I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. How, how, will they, how will they know the difference? How will people know that I live for Jesus? How will people know that we are Christians, Christ-like? How will people know that we are disciples of Jesus? How will they know? Is it because I wear a collar or cross? Is it because I've got a t-shirt that reads, what would Jesus do? Is it because I go to church every Sunday or every other Sunday or once a month <laughs> or whenever I get around to it? Is, is it they'll know I'm a Christian because the preacher knows my name and my name is on the church roll? And I'm a member in good standing at the church. Well, will they know I'm a Christian because I know a few Bible verses like Jesus wept and God so loved the world. Or I know one or two hymns, one or two of those sacred hymns, pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my heart. Would they, would they know I'm a Christian because I grew up in the church? You know, I, I know the church language, first giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, to the pastor and the first lady and to all the deacons, trustees, stewards, blah, blah, blah. Is it, is it, is it, would they know I'm a believer, Daryl, because I'm able to say those things and I know those things? If, if 
someone would follow us. And I'm not talking about today, but let's say tomorrow, because we know that you don't cuss on Sunday. And we know we don't tell lies on Sunday. And we know we do right on Sunday. But let's, let's, just, let's just pretend like tomorrow. If somebody would follow me tomorrow when, when I get up out of bed and I put on my clothes and I go doing whatever it is I'm called to do, would the person who was following me, the person who was watching me, the person who was walking right after I walked, would that person know mm, that I'm a Christian? Would they know I'm a follower of Jesus? Would they, would they recognize that? Or would they watch me do whatever I do and they say, oh, yeah, that's a nice guy. Boy, that's really a nice guy. I like that guy. He sure was nice. He, he let that lady get in front of him. Boy, that's a nice guy. He allowed that person to, to, to do this or do that. That's a nice guy. He helped this person and he helped that person. Would they really know? that I'm a follower of Jesus. That when we wake up in the morning, our desire is, God, thank you for another day. Now, how can I please you? How can I glorify you? How can I, in my everyday walk, in my everyday thing, whatever, whatever comes my way this day, God, how can I prove to those that are around me that I'm in love with you? that I've had a conversation with you, that I've been touched by you, that I've surrendered my life to you, that I've given my home to you. How will they know? Mm. I'm a believer. Perhaps they may have heard me sing a Christian song or quote a Bible verse or perhaps they've seen me pray. Well, I'll tell you one way they would know. One way that they would know, and the Bible tells us this, that we are to be his witnesses. We are to tell our story. See, and, 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 and to, to be a follower of Jesus means that all I'm doing is I'm just telling my story. I'm, I'm telling what Jesus is to me. That's, that's all. That, that's all. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a superhero or anything like that. I'm just, just telling my story. So how do, you, how do you tell your story in an everyday situation? Well, here's how you do it. First of all, you tell what your life was like before Christ. Oh, no matter what the situation is, you can tell what your life was like before Christ. Well, before Christ, I did cuss on Sunday. Mm. But then the second thing you do is you tell how you came to Christ. Well, the way I came to Christ was we were singing, I love the Lord. And I said to God, God, I want you to be my Savior. And I surrendered my life to him. That's how I came to him. And then the third thing you tell them is you tell them what your life is like now because of Christ. And so now, now on Sundays, I don't cuss as much. <laughs> so so, so you, tell, you tell your story. You tell your story. You tell about what your life was like before Christ. You tell how you came to him. And then you tell how your life has changed because of Christ. And so how will people know that I've been with Jesus? How will they know I'm a follower of him? How will they know? They may not read my t-shirt. They may not see my collar. They may not watch me pray. How will they know I belong to him? Well, Jesus says it here, here in this, in this text, the last Thursday of his life. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's giving them the bread and the wine to remind him of his body and his blood. And then Judas is going to betray him and he takes off. And he leaves, and then Jesus says, listen, I'm giving you a new commandment. And it's really not a new commandment. It's not anything that's brand new. He said, but I want you to make sure you get this. Ah, I wish you'd hear me this morning. I want to make sure you get this, this new commandment, this new rule, this thing I want you to know. I'm about to die. I'm going to leave you. I won't be with you where I'm going. You can't come now. I'm literally about to die. 
time. But here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that they will know you if you show love one for another. How will they know? You might believe it. He says, well, it's real simple. If you love them like I loved you, ah, by this will they know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another. How will they know I belong to him? Well, because there's love in the way I talk. How do I know I've been a follower of him? I'm a follower of him because there's love in the way I respond to people. You see, it's not just how you say it or what you say, it's how you say it. And we've got to make sure that we're careful how we use our tongue. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down below. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. We've got to be careful with the words that come out of our mouths. How will they know I belong to him? Because the words that come out of my mouth are words that lift and not pull down. The words that come out of my mouth are the words that build people up and not crush them. Words that come out of my mouth are words that exalt people, that encourages folks, rather than words that shoot them down. How will they know? Because there are times when we want to even give a person a piece of our mind. I just got to tell them. I got to say it. No, you don't have to say it. Listen. You don't have to say it. It's not like it's going to kill you not to say it. Maybe, maybe they know I belong to him because I show grace like he shows grace. Maybe they know we belong to him because we're merciful as he is merciful. Maybe they know we belong to him because we build people up rather than tear them down. How will they know? We're Christians. Well, because maybe, maybe we will live our lives so that when people see us coming, they come to us rather than run away from us. When they see us coming, they don't try to duck us and dodge us like we got the plague or like we're <clears throat> coughing and we've got COVID. Maybe when they see us coming, their hearts jump for joy because they know that here comes a follower of Jesus. Mm. And what I know about this follower of Jesus is that he loves God and part of him loving God says, how can you love God whom you haven't seen, but you can't get along with the folks you see every day? See, the good news is you got to understand that they will know I'm his follower, not by how high I shout, not by how loud I speak, not by how many colors I wear, not by how many times I check the box and I've been in church or this and that and that. No, not by how many times I give to the poor, not by how many times I work and do volunteer work and acts of kindness. If you do all these things, Paul says, but have not love, it profits you nothing. Love, we've got to demonstrate that we are followers of him by loving one another. So, we've got to be selective in what we say. And what we do as a follower, we've got to love people. And I'll be honest with you, I'm tired of Christians just preaching to me and just preaching like preachers just preach. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. 
You don't have to brag. You can be like, well, I'm, you know, I'm a really good follower of the Lord. I'm a Christian. I, I do all this kind of stuff. You don't have to say a word. No. Just, just like Jesus says, just let your light shine. Because I don't know about you, but the world that I see today needs more light than ever before. I don't know about you, but in the situations that God places me in, more than ever before, he needs light in dark places. Where do I go? Well, you go where you're going. Where do I go? You go where you normally go. Where do I go? You go and do what you normally do, but when you do it, you do it with the love of God on the inside and it translates on the outside. You do it so that those can see the light of God in you. So that we say it all the time, so that those who know you but don't know him will want to know him because they ran into you, because they bumped into you because they work with you on the same shift, because your daughter and their daughter are on the same soccer team, because you go to the same church, because you shop in the same store, they will want to know him because they got a chance to know you. So how will they know that we're Christians? A Catholic priest by the name of Peter Raymond Schultz wrote a hymn back in the 60s. It was those hymns that they wrote during the time when, you know, there was a lot of war and stuff going on. And it was the time the hippies would play the guitar and stuff. And it was one of the first opportunities that he brought a guitar into the Catholic church. He was leading a youth group. And he wanted them to get the idea of what it was to really bring light into dark places. What is it really like to be a light for Jesus? And so he wrote, we are one in the spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit and we are one in the Lord. And together, may our unity be restored and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They'll know we're Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. No man's dignity will be denied. And they'll know we are Christians. Not by how loud I shout. Not by how many t-shirts I wear with Jesus' name on it. Not by how many testimonies I give, but they'll know we are Christians by our love. And so Jesus says to them, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another by this. By this. Not by checking boxes at churches, by this. Not by how many Bible verses you could quote or how many hymns you can sing by this? All will know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another. I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on in your life, but what I do know is I know that God wants us to be the light of the world. As a matter of fact, he has said that to us. He said, look, you're the light. You are. 
Oh, I know, I know, I know, God, I don't feel like it all the time. I know, God, um, I have rough days and tough days. And I know, God, there are times I'd rather just stay in the bed. But he said, no, wherever you are, Cliff, I need you to be light. I need you to be light everywhere you go. I need you to show your light so that people will, will glorify your Father who's in you. And they'll know that you're my disciple. How? Because I have love. I demonstrate it. We act it out. We live it out. We have love one for the other. If by chance you're here, and the day today where you hear God clearly and you want to give him your life, the Bible says he stands at the door and he knocks. And if anyone would open their heart, all they have to do is come in and I'll stay with you. And I'll let them know why it's cast you out. If you want to give your life to the Lord, today's a great day to do it. If you're here in the parking lot, just let us know. We'd love to walk you through that. If you're listening by way of social media, we'd love to connect with you shortly thereafter this message, and we'll talk to you about how that is done. Or if by chance you want to become a member of this church, or if you're looking at social media, there's a church somewhere where you are, we'll connect you. We'll connect you because it's not about building membership like this church only. No, it's about building the kingdom of God. And then if you have any prayer requests, especially those who are on social media, would you send us a, a text message? You can send it to it privately or you can send it in the chat and we'll definitely pray for you. And those who are in the audience will pray for you as well. I did receive a call this morning that Mrs. Um, Peggy, Miss uh, Betty Hargrove's sister, went back into the hospital this morning. So we remember to pray for her if you would. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us it's a love story. It's, it's about us loving you and you loving us. And it's about demonstrating that love to each other. I pray, God, as we take this communion even this morning, that it reminds us of the love that you have for us and the love that we ought to share with each other. God bless those who we're doing and bound to pray for, those who are sick, maybe among us even right now. God, we pray for those who are going to hospital beds and those who don't know what the cure is. God, we ask that you will provide healing. And you do it any way you do it, God, because any way you bless us, Lord, we'll be satisfied. God, we pray for those under the sound of my voice. You know every need, you know every desire. Meet it according to your riches and glory. God, we lift up the soul that's closest to hell. Let them know that it's not too late. And they can turn around. All they have to do is confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, and they could be saved. God, we give you thanks for all that you're doing and will do in our lives. Continue to hold us in the palm of your hand. For it's in the mighty mattress and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give God some praise in the house. What a mighty God. And as our um, choir is getting ready to come to sing, for those of you who have not received your communion, if you'll come to the table now, I'll make sure that you get it. For those who didn't get a chance to get it as you drove in, and then we're going to take our communion. So is anybody that needs to come and receive their communion, if you'll just come here now.
never be discouraged when we take it to the Lord in to the Lord in prayer. As we prepare to receive the communion, we invite you, Higo. Higo. As we prepare to receive the communion, we hear this general invitation. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in this holy way, we that you draw near with faith, take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Our prayer of general confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Make of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we have from time to time have recently have committed by thought, word, and deed. Against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercies did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, who of thy tender, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercies has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with holy repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, unto whom all hearts are open and all desires known. And from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy holy table, O merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We're not so much worthy as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Therefore, gracious Lord, so grant us to eat of the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Our prayer of consecration, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercies did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did instituted in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until this coming again, hear us. O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, our creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, 
In remembrance of his death and passion, when he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I take the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I eat it first as a symbol of the priest and representing that he died not only for you but for me as well. The precious blood which flowed freely down Calvary, I take it as a symbol, as the high priest, that he died not only for your sins but for mine as well and I drink it with thanksgiving. Let's pray, it's very meet right in our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we, Lord, and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy. So you have the communion kit. When you get it to the part where you see the bread on the top, it represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you peel it and take out the bread now? It represents his body broken on Calvary for you and for me. Take it now and eat it. Feeding on him in your heart with faith and with thanksgiving. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. In it was grape wine, and represents the blood that will be shed for you and for many. Take it now and drink it all as an act of faith, and it will preserve you and keep you until he comes back for you. And be thankful. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly beseech thy desire, service desire, thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and the whole church may obtain the remission of sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. I'm going to be seeking thee that all who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounding duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, 
O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that taketh away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God, we thank you for the privilege to take this communion. God, we thank you for the privilege to be in this place. We also thank you, God, for calling us to be a follower of you. And we ask you, dear God, to help our light to so shine that others might see your good works in us. God, we pray that you will hold us in the very palm of your hands. And now unto him that is able. He's able to keep you from falling, and he's able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Have a great day. Good job. Thank <laughs> you.